Hi, welcome back. Now, this is our third and final video in the Couture Wedding Dress video series. In this video, Yemi discusses his experience and what he likes his bride to experience during the journey of creating her one-of-a-kind couture gown, the timeline involved, and a couple of surprises. Hi. I'm Michelle Mays, your Chief Concierge for Luxury Wedding Planning in New York and owner of Renee Michelle Events. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome and thank you for stopping by. Be sure you click subscribe and the notification bell so you'll know when future videos are posted. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. What do you envision or what would you like your client to feel, to experience, through the process um, and also for that actual day? Okay, that's a very good question and thank you very much for asking. It's very important for me, for my client to look and feel their best at the end of the process when they're wearing what I've made for them. But I also like from the moment they come in, from the moment when I'm asking the questions through the the twirling process for them to feel ownership. That's why I don't, I don't want a situation where there are any surprises. I am designing something that doesn't exist yet, but I would ask, you know, for example, choice of fabric. I have what I recommend, but at the end of the day, the client choose. That's what I want. That's what I want. So you, d you don't feel overwhelmed or you don't feel I'm not in control. I want my client to feel ownership in the whole process down to the embellishments a client would, would approve it before we go ahead. But I also want them to just, you know, see the difference in um, how the dress makes their figure change. Because my whole ethos, my unique selling point what I'm known for is figure enhancement. That's my unique selling point. And I do that through my use of corsetry. No matter what shape you are, if you're thin as a pole, you can still get curved up. If you're, you know, if you're big, I can cinch you in. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to create is the classical hourglass shape, if that's what my client wants. And it's just that feel of confidence. For example, nobody wears a bra in my dresses because I am creating all the support and the structure within the dress. And if you wear a bra, the bra would be, it will be almost fighting with what I'm trying to do. So you, a client's body just rests in what I have created and that yes. sort of just molds your body. And, and I achieve that through the, the twirl process because that's when I can almost go and pin the 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 twirl the prototype on your body so that it just it's almost like it's painted on you that's the investment that is is priceless you know that is priceless when creating something for you yes yeah. you have it you've invested you have it for however long you want it or again as an heirloom piece and the experience of creating that um with a designer, uh, a couture designer such as yourself that wants you, the recipient, the bride to have that journey of experience because it's also a story that you can tell. It's a story behind that creation. What is the timeline for the couture creation as well as your other line? Thank you so much for that. Now, couture, I prefer six to nine months. Um, the longer the time I have, the better. Um, but obviously, like 18 months, sometimes I think, oh, that's a little bit too much. So six to nine months is the, is the sweet spot. Uh, for made to measure, made to order, it's uh, three to four months. Three to four months. And the, red, the loungewear is between two weeks and four weeks. That is, that's quite a quick turnaround. Um, but for couture, it's six to nine months is the ideal time. 
for, for Couture, you have to factor in the 12 feet in. You also have to factor in the fact that some embellishments are going to be made for this dress and then they are going to be hand sewn on. So you have to build that time in. Now, it's not like if you put a stopwatch, it's going to take me six months. I'm dealing with different clients, but I tell you that if you talk to my clients, they will feel they are the only clients I'm dealing with. And for that to happen, I have to build in the time. Um, so therefore, I, I have to build in the time so that there's no panic, there's no stress, and there's no almost like a factory situation. Um, but it's, it's quite normal, it's, it's standard that time frame. So if you're able to have a, a couture item or thankfully Yemi also offers something that is um, more in your price range or more in your, in, in your reachability, yes. then that's, that's great. Um, you have other lines that you offer. Um, give us a little insight um, about those lines as they relate to bridal wear. Um, okay. And okay. What that involves. Yeah. So for quite for quite a long time, I did concentrate on couture because that is my absolute passion. And I I became aware that there are people that absolutely love my designs, absolutely adore what I do, but just cannot afford it. And I totally respect that because going into a marriage is not just a wedding. You're going to a marriage. You're going to a life. So I have a line. Um, it's the made to order line. So these dresses exist. It's called the Ashiyori AG collection. And that's a Yoruba phrase, which basically means triumph through adversity. Throughout the COVID period, we were, you know, sort of, sort of a horrendous uh, period for everybody. But at least good came out of it, which was this collection of dresses that they range from about three three thousand dollars to about five to six thousand dollars and um they are designs that exist but they are made to the measurement and the dress size of the client so it's not couture it's not bespoke um but it's sort of in the middle and i also developed a luxury loungewear collection made in the u.s um of silk shamus and they come in all sorts of colors and those are ready to wear. And because it's loungewear, the fit is more eased. So it's not that restricted and it's made for comfort, but it's not, you can wear it at home, but you can also wear it out. It's perfect for either even a beach wedding or your honeymoon or rehearsal dinner. And there are also pieces like camisoles and shorts and, um, you know, jackets coats uh, that can be mixed and matched. So you can buy one piece or you can buy the whole collection and just, you know, just mix and match and wear them together or wear them with other items of clothing you have. Yeah, I mean, anything else that you would like to share, last bit of nugget or nuggets that you would like to share before we um, sign off? Yes, what I wanted to also mention was that um, in my Instagram, because I... I the dilemma for me and what I noticed, I've been in business for 30 years. And if I got a, a scent for each time, either in the middle of the process or at the end of the process, the bride tells me, oh my God, if I had known about this X, Y, Z, you know, they would have appreciated it at the beginning or they would, wouldn't have been worried about how much they were, you know, going to spend. So I have been sharing something I call trust the process because with each dress I make, I document it because so much goes into it and I'm always taking little videos, little photos and some of this go back years. So I've started sharing that out because I think it's important for people to just know this is what, these are certain things that are involved in the process. I've talked about it, but if you go on my Instagram, you can see it. There are little snippets and they're on uh, my TikTok as well. You know, if people go and look at that, that would be great. And um, I think that 2022, 2023, um, in terms of bridal, is, is, I'm, I have a feeling of optimism 
Um, lots of people that either have to postpone or, you know, cancel their weddings. They're you now feeling safe enough to do it now. And people are still falling in love getting engaged. We're just looking forward to creating more fantastic dresses that will make people look and feel their best. That's my passion. And, and I really appreciate the opportunity to share my story with, with your viewers, Michelle. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, thank you again so much. We've come to the end of the Couture Wedding Dress video series. Yemi has kindly shared so much information with us. And I hope you gained a lot of knowledge, understanding, and are able to make a sound decision about what you're going to choose and the road you're going to take for your wedding gown selection. Now, if this is your first time watching a video in this video series, be sure to click the frames popping up now. The first video is all about Yemi and his journey into the couture wedding gown industry. The second video will share, he shares information for you to have a better understanding about couture, what it is, and the couture process. Make sure you click subscribe and the notification bell. And any questions at all, be sure to comment in the box below and I will respond. In the meantime, enjoy your wedding journey and I will see you soon.